What's going on, everybody? It is February 26th, Monday, unfortunately. Uh, we've got a 10-game slate, and we've got a late start, although I haven't confirmed that, actually. But I assume that it's 7.30. It is 7.30. Okay. Uh, that's awesome. Makes my life a little bit easier. Uh, so we'll be going live starting at 6.30 tonight. Um... Didn't do much uh, this weekend. The weather was like 75 and perfect, so I spent a lot of time outside and, and not playing any fantasy, but that all changes for the week, so let's dive in right now. Uh, first up, we've got the Hawks hosting the Lakers. Um, Hawks are one and a half point underdogs at home. They have a 111 implied total, which is seventh. Uh, it's actually a pretty good spot. It's going to be interesting to see um, how much the early games are stacked, especially because we have the Wolves at 10 o'clock, um, and they should be relatively highly owned. So it'll make for uh, some interesting sweats for tonight. So Schroeder is 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. Let's switch this to Atlanta. Eek. Not very good in that first game back from the break. Minutes down a little bit. It's a good matchup. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to say Shooter's a three. I like that price. There's some upside there. You know, just before the break, hung a 40. That, you'd be more than happy with 40. But John Collins is the key takeaway here. Uh, he's 5,800 on FanDuel and 5,800 on DK. Um, been playing 30 minutes a game now. Uh, Ilyasova is gone. Uh, so this is a great spot for Collins, especially against the Lakers where it's not like he's going against some veteran-laden team. You know, this should be a, a spot where he can shine. Um, I'm going to say that Collins is a 2 uh, it's just a, a great spot and a great price. Let's see, Baysmore, 5,900 and 5,500. So you're looking for 30. I'm going to say that he's just a four. I never get Kent Baysmore right. He's another one of those guys where I just I never get a feel for his matchup or what I need him to do. Torian Prince, 4,800 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. So you can safely just not play him on DraftKings. But on FanDuel, yeah, I mean, I think that I would I like him a little bit more now that Ilyasova's gone. I'm going to say that he is, he's just a four, but a four on FanDuel. Again, okay, it's the Hawks. You don't want to go too crazy stacking up guys on teams that suck. Uh, Deadman at 5,600. 28. Yeah, I don't trust that one very much. Mascala, 4,000 on FanDuel, 3,600 on DK. Uh, he's played 24 and 25 minutes in his last two. Got to 21 fantasy points right before the break. 16 in his first game back after the break. Um, I like Mascala as a four. I'm anxious to see how he plays the rest of the season. And then probably Tyler Dorsey is as far down as I would want to go. Thirty-seven hundred on Fanduel. Um, he's just a four, and that's just on FanDuel. That's not bad for the Hawks tonight. Um, but ten game slate, so you don't want to go too crazy with it. But Collins is just that's an incredible value. Go to the Lakers now. What is going on here? I pasted the wrong stuff in for the Lakers. Where are they hiding? Yep, there they are. Let's grab that. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. So uh, weekend was great. Weather was perfect. It's sad to go back to work today, but I'm excited to play this tonight. Wife is in Boston for the night, so should be a fun one. All right, there we go. All right, so Brandon Ingram, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,600 on, well, uh, Lakers 112.5 implied total is fifth. Um, I don't really like Brandon Ingram at this price. Uh, the expectation is that Lonzo will play tonight. I've got him in for 24 minutes. And if that's the case, uh, I think that brings down um, my interest in Ingram. Uh, I'm going to say that he's a four. It's just one of those things where he's priced with Lonzo being out, basically. And, you know, he's based on usage and the way that the ball gets moved around. Uh, he's probably a couple hundred dollars too expensive. So, as for other guys on the Lakers, like Julius Randle, for instance, uh, exceptional play on uh, FanDuel tonight. 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. Um, so you're looking for like 38-ish. I uh, put up 41 and 45 and 42 in the last three games that he's played, but he's been up in the 40s pretty regularly. Um, I would guess that his salary is going to get into the eights in the next game or two, so this might be the, the last time you can grab a nice chunk of him. Um, he's a two on FanDuel and a three on uh, DraftKings. But I'll have a decent amount of Randall. I'll try to limit the Randall and Collins overlap as much as I can. I've got to figure those two guys will take away from each other. KCP is 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. I don't really have any interest in that. Uh, I understand that he's gone off a little bit, but again, with ball back, sort of moves the minutes around uh, in the backcourt. 6,500 is a lot. You know, he needs 32. It's been playing really well lately, but I don't want to go too crazy here. Yeah. Josh Hart, 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,300 on TK. Um, yeah, I mean, he's a four, I guess. Needs 25-ish. Been in that area pretty regularly. Had 29. Wait, where's the ball game? Yeah, had 29 in uh, Lonzo's return, so not too worried there. Isaiah, man, oh man, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. It's just disappointing. He's just not the same guy. Needs 28. I mean, if he's going to do it, you know, against Atlanta, it wouldn't be crazy, but he's just a four for me. And even then, uh, you know, that's a bit of a stretch. I don't have any interest in Kuzma or Ball. Brooke Lopez is probably a, I don't know, a straight four. More interesting on DK than he is on FanDuel. It's a good game. There's a lot of pieces to like. Um, being able to hit, you know, the things that pop out of that game are going to be crucial. Next up in a game that I wouldn't want to watch a second of, Boston hosting the Grizzlies. Uh, Celtics 11.5 point favorites at home. Um, Boston still with just the 14th highest implied total, even with the ass beating that they should put on the Grizzlies. So this should be um, not interesting to most. Kyrie at 8,500, 8,700 on DK. That's just way too expensive. Uh, coming off a big game though, but they're playing, this will be their third game in four nights. Probably pretty difficult to get up for Memphis at this point. Um, I'm going to say that Kyrie is a four. Horford, 6,800, uh, 6,400 on DK. Now that's kind of interesting, but he's just, he hasn't been going off lately. I, I can't get too crazy in this game. That's a four. 
Tatum and Brown, you know, you guys know the drill here. Uh, both fours. Marcus Morris, 4,500 on FanDuel is probably the only piece that I would like a little bit. Uh, he would need 22. Not the best game in his most recent, but, you know, had a 26 pointer, a 33. Had two 26s and a 33. So if he's going to get any minutes, um, that $4,500 price point on FanDuel is pretty good. I don't see any interest really in him on DK at 5,000, though. I will say he's a four on DK. And I don't really have any interest in Marcus Smart. So we'll go to Memphis. Who the hell knows with Memphis? 95 implied total is dead last by... Who's 19th? Four. By a full nine points. That is just comically bad. They're just... Ugh, I feel so bad for them. Uh, Gasol is 6,900 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. Um, you know, he's on two days rest, which is actually probably pretty good for him. Needs to get to 35, which he can obviously do. It's not a great matchup, but his price has fallen so much on FanDuel that it's actually feasible. Uh, I'm going to say that he's a three on FanDuel, and I wouldn't touch him on DK at 7,100. Uh, Andrew Harrison, 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. I don't have any interest. I don't have any interest in Dylan Brooks. Um, Jamichael Green, I guess you can talk yourself into. 4,700 on both sites. Um, you know, he put up 33 a couple nights ago, which would be solid value. Um, he's a four. And Jarrell Martin, 4,100 on both sites. Uh, you're looking for 20 plus. Again, like, you know, he can get there, but you don't want a lot of Grizzlies. Ah, stupid Drill Martin and this stupid 1R at the beginning. That gets me every time. And I'm just uh, dumb and can't remember how to spell his name. Uh, there's something about a coffee on a Monday morning. A taste better after a weekend of some cocktails. <laughs> uh, Brooklyn Nets hosting the Chicago Bulls. Nets three and a half point favorites, which is oh, that's amazing. Well, I know that Tankathon has the most recent record. So the Nets in their last ten are oh shit, they don't have a pick. I think they're 1-9 in their last 10. Uh, they are. They've lost 8 straight. Man, the tank is on hard here. But anyway, uh, it's shocking to see that the Nets are 2.5 point favorites at home while being on an 8 game losing streak and losing you know, 9 of 10. But they're playing the Bulls, and the Bulls are 2-8 in their last 10. Also awful. This game, exercise in futility here. Holy shit. So, Rondé Hollis-Jefferson expected to play, uh, Karis LeVert expected to play, both of them expected to be on minutes limits, so uh, they're not exactly the uh, the sexiest plays, and then losing their, you know, 40 minutes or so that they'll be on the floor uh, nerfs some of the other guys as well, so it's hard to get super pumped about anything on the net side, which is a shame uh, because the Bulls are so bad on defense, you know, you would want to grab that. There are little pieces to like, so let's dive in. Uh, Alan Crabb is 5,300 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. Um, it has me nervous because of everybody coming back, but the Bulls are really bad at giving up threes, and Crabb lives and dies by the three, so I can't just ignore him. And that price on FanDuel isn't too bad. You know, you would need 26. He's had multiple high 30s games lately. Um, now, granted, that has been with everybody out, but I'm going to say Crab is a 3 on FanDuel and a 4 on DK. I don't know what's up with this DraftKings pricing after the break, but I don't like it. 
Uh, Damari Carroll, 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. Um, you know, you're looking 28 from Carroll. I'm perfectly okay with Carroll as well as a three on FanDuel and a four on DK. Uh, Dinwiddie, I think, is going to be in some trouble from a DFS perspective with these two guys coming back. I think it, this affects him the most. Um, I don't really uh, have much interest in him at that price point. So he's just uh, he's just going to be a four for me. Um, D'Angelo at 7,200 on FanDuel is probably just a four. On FanDuel, though, I don't, what am I saying? It's it's so early. I Just the dumbest shit comes out of my mouth. And then I hear it, and I wonder, like, I can't imagine listening to this dumb shit coming out of my mouth. Uh, 7,200 for Russell on FanDuel is not very appealing. But 6,300 on DK is a lot better. Um... For once, we've got a DraftKings salary that's a little bit more appealing. Uh, I don't really have any interest in Jared Allen, although 5400 is a nice price. I don't, like you're really banking on that 46 point upside there. Um, the Bulls are bad against centers. I'll say Jared Allen is a four. I'll probably have him in a couple lineups. I don't want any part of Rondé Hollis, Jefferson, or the rest of the guys. So let's go to Chicago. Ooh, Bulls. One hundred seven implied total is twelfth. Um, great matchup here. Keep an eye on any news about Rolo or Justin Holiday. I'm assuming they're still out, but. I think that I read some murmurs that Holiday could potentially play here today. So, uh, lots of value on the Bulls. David Nwaba is 5,000 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. So, you're looking for 25. Um, had 39 a couple nights ago. It's a great spot. I'll say that Nwaba is a three straight across the board. Wow, he takes so many shots at the rim. He just doesn't take very many shots. 73% of seven is five, so. Uh, Markinen, 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. Needed a, I liked him a lot. Um, what would that have been? Saturday night? Friday night? Friday night. I don't know, whatever night. Um, he just, just couldn't score the basketball. Like If he hits two threes randomly, uh, really changes my night. I was a little heavier in, on him than the competition, and uh, I was wrong, unfortunately. Anyway, Markinen would need 30. Uh, he has not been very good lately, but you would think Brooklyn could be a a spot to make that better. My only concern is that Markinen takes such a large proponent of his or portion of his shots from three, and uh, Brooklyn really good at limiting that. I'm not sure how much Markinen would live in the mid range in this particular game. Um, so while I like him on paper a lot, I'm a little concerned with the matchup. He's a three. Um, just because of his price but I have a little like I'm a little reserved here because I feel like he's hitting a bit of the rookie wall let's take a look at his recent trend since January yeah and you know that's a that's a slight downturn whereas at the beginning of January he was more in like the 0.55 points per possession range, and now he's down more in like the 0.45 range. Um, I think he could just be getting a little tired. Uh, Zach Levine, 7,600 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. Uh, that's a really unappealing price. He's a four for me. 
That's about all I can say on Levine. Chris Dunn, though. Um, oh, man, I'm really excited for this one, I think. 6,500 on FanDuel, awesome. 7,000 on DK, much less awesome. But Dunn uh, takes 50% of his shots from the mid-range, which fits this Brooklyn team uh, like a glove. Has Dunn played at all against Brooklyn? Nope, that was last year. Um, so Chris Dunn is a two for me on DraftKings, or on FanDuel, rather, sorry. Um, needs 32 for value. Uh, his minutes have ramped up. You know, he's playing about 30. I think this is a great, great spot for him. Um, if he can get his shot to fall in the mid-range, I can I could see a really big night out of Chris Dunn. The matchup is good. The price is good. Uh, it's hard to avoid him, in my opinion. I'm probably going to have uh, a pretty big portion of Dunn, and um, I'm going to try to have... Um, he's going to be one of the guys that I try to go a little heavier on compared to uh, the rest of the tourney. So I'll, he'll be one of my key tenants. I'll need him to really drive me to the top. Um, unfortunately, that $7,000 price tag is not very appealing on DK. I'm going to say that he's a 4. Bobby Portis is 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. Um, not terribly interested in it here. Uh, he's just a four. Denzel Valentine is 4,000 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. So you'd be looking for 20. Um, he's been getting minutes in these last two, but he's not the type of guy that just scores at will. Not, not much of a shooter um, in terms of attempts so he's a four just for salary filler but i wouldn't i don't imagine having him and uh campaign uh if he's just going to be playing 20 minutes it's hard to it's hard to look at him there there's not a ton of upside in the number uh, especially against brooklyn it's an interesting game from a fantasy perspective <sighs> now i don't even want to see this so the knicks are hosting <laughs> the golden state warriors uh, they are 11.5 point underdogs at home. 109.25 implied total is 10th. Hey, this should be well, this should be something. This is one of those games where it wouldn't shock me if Tim Hardaway went like 2 for 19 from the field. But as I say that, he'll probably have one, one of those weird Tim Hardaway shoot the lights out games. Anyway. Hardaway is 6,300 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. Um, he's a four for me. I don't ever like him. I'm going to sneeze. I think I got the mute button to work there. If I didn't, apologies for the sneeze. <laughs> Uh, Hardaway's just a four. It's hard to like him. Uh, Beasley has been my bugaboo lately. <laughs> 6,000 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. I love the price. Um, I'm just, I don't know. When did Porzingis get hurt? So let's say since February 8th. How many shots has Beasley been taking? Taking and has what is this? Okay, yeah, I don't. Thanks, NBA Wowie. Um, I want to see if he's been negatively impacted since Porzingis went down. So let's start at February eighth and submit. Oh, that's last year. That's not helping. I was wondering why there are so many minutes and so many possessions. There we go. So, I've been on Beasley heavily uh, these past two games, and I feel like there's something different about him. So, 
Beasley is taking one less shot a game in these last uh, 200 minutes compared to what I have him at. Tim Hardaway Jr. taking an extra 2.8 compared to what I've got him at. Trey Burke gunning as well. So I'm going to go ahead and tweak these guys a little bit. I'm going to bring Beasley down uh, 3%. I'm going to bump Hardaway Jr. 3%. I don't know why I typed 1.5 there. Um, I'm going to give a 1.5% boost to... Uh, these are small, but every little bit tweak moves the needle. Um, and if Tim Hardaway is going to be gunning a little bit more, that makes him a little more interesting. Um, I'm probably a little high on Beasley, but, you know, the dude guns. Uh, and his price on FanDuel is just so low. Oh, I'm typing over all sorts of weird shit. There we go. So I'm going to say that Beasley is a 3 on FanDuel and a 4 on DK. I'll probably be a little heavier on Beasley than I am on most guys, but I just like that price. For someone like him that just guns and guns and guns, like it's in his mind to be a scorer, and I don't think that he's going to take too many games in a row where he's not like, all right, fuck this noise. Uh, Frankie Smokes at 27 minutes, 3,700 on FanDuel, 3,700 on DK. You know, you're looking for 20. He can get there, but um, he can't be anything other than a 4. Moutier, 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. Um, so we're looking 22 or so. Just... You want so much more out of him as well. Uh, I'm going to say that Moutier is a 3 on FanDuel. Actually, he's just a straight 3. Uh, Cantor, been playing less minutes, 23 and 21 in his last two, which is disconcerting. Um, I've really liked him this year. But at 6,700 and playing less minutes, I, I don't have any interest in him at all. Uh, Trey Burke. 4,900 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK, so you'd be looking 25. He's put up 40 in his last two, which is bonkers. Um, gotta like him. Don't know why the Knicks have him, but he's a three for me. And then uh, Kylo Quinn. Um, if he gets to 20 minutes, you know, that's not bad. This is probably a better matchup for Kylo Quinn than it is for uh, Cantor. So at 4,400 on FanDuel, 3,900 on DK, I think O'Quinn looks like a really nice punt play at center. I'm going to say that Kyle O'Quinn is a three. Knicks, sneaky interesting. Now, Warriors, 120.75 implied total, uh, number one on the slate. Got to be careful here. It wouldn't shock me to see... Uh, one of these guys sit, particularly Draymond. Um, you know, it's a good spot for him to get a little bit of rest, and the Knicks suck. So, you know, be aware of that. The good news is it's a 7.30 start, so we should have that kind of information uh, long before lock. But I'd prepare for something like that. Uh, Jordan Bell could potentially be back here. Um, I don't think that that would totally open him up. I don't think they would give him that sort of run of minutes. It would just sort of make the the other studs a little bit more interesting. So let's start with Clay, 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Um, I think that that's just, he's just a basic level uh, three. I think that Curry at 9,600, 10-6 on DK. Um, I, like, I don't even think I would play Curry on DraftKings. I'm going to say that he's a 4 on DK because I think it's silly to you know like disregard Curry. It's not like the matchup's great, but he's a 3 on FanDuel. That, that's just too much freight on DK. Especially on a 10-game slate with all that value out there. Um... KD is 10-2 on FanDuel, 10-5 on DK. 
I'm gonna go the same way here. He's a three on FanDuel and a four on DK. And then Draymond, 8,100 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. He's just a straight three for me. Although, again, that DraftKings price is a little, makes me a little apprehensive. Um, I would say I prefer uh, Curry the most, then Draymond, then Durant, then Clay. Um, but I'll have, you know, bits of all of those guys. To the Raptors we go. Uh, Raptors are hosting the Pistons. 114.5 implied total is fourth. They are 10.5 point favorites at home. So this should be an interesting game. Uh, first up is DeMar. 8,200 on FanDuel, 8,200 on DK. Needs just over 40. Had uh, 49 in his most recent game. Um, I like this game for DeMar. Uh, I'm going to say that he's a 3 on FanDuel and a 4 on DK. Lowry, uh, 8,300 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. He's just a straight 4 for me. That's a tough price. Um, you really need like an exceptional game here. I do like the matchup. Uh, Pistons do give up a ton of threes, and that does fit Lowry a little bit more. But I think he's just too expensive to offset that good matchup. I'll have him, I just won't. He's not something I can focus on with a crazy level of uh, volume. Abaka, 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. Having a little bit of a renaissance. I've been playing like shit for a while. Put up 36, 36, even 26 is better than what he had been doing. Um, you're looking for 28 out of him now. I think this is a good spot. Hopefully he's feeling a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to say that he is just a 3. And Jonas, 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. Been playing really well like just over the past month or two. Um... I don't want to go too crazy for him against Andre Drummond. But, you know, he looks pretty good. That's a three. Uh, Van Vliet, 5,000 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. Um, he's just a four. Interesting guy to... Uh, run out as like a GPP punt if you think this game gets out of hand and he sees a couple extra minutes. Um, otherwise, I don't really have any interest in the rest of it, so let's go to Detroit. Uh, Pistons, 104, point, or no, 104 flat implied total, 19th, uh, second worst on the slate. Uh, Toronto, exceptional defensive team from a fantasy perspective. This is not a spot where you are looking to stack Pistons, in my opinion. Um, Blake is 8,000 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. Now, why you got to go and do that? Do that, do that. 8,000. Oh, my God. So, he needs 40. How much is his price down? Because that seems really ridiculous. Yeah, so he was, I mean, granted he hasn't been playing well, but he was in the nines, and now he's down to a flat eight. I, you can't ignore that. I don't even mind that he's playing Toronto. How's he been lately? I know it's going to be bad, but. Oh. Yeah, even just, he should be more expensive than that oh my god i can't even believe i'm doing this uh, blake's a three for me on fanduel that 8500 dollar price tag is uh prohibitive on dk i'd actually probably not play him at all at that price but um 
I think at that price, you really need to entertain some Blake. It's just too cheap for a guy that has upside in his number. Um, now, granted, this is a back-to-back -back on the road. All signs point to the opposite of Blake having a big night. But there's something I can't shake about that price drought. There's some value in that number. Uh, Drummond is 9,900 on FanDuel, 9,200 on DK. So you need 50. Now this is a spot where I'm not super interested. On the back-to-back, -back, tough defense. I think he's priced acceptably. So he's just a four, and I'll have a minimal amount of him. I don't expect him to be uh, highly owned either. Reggie Bullock, 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. Um, I don't have any interest in him at all. Raptors really limit the three. That's pretty much his entire game. So, Ish, 6,000, uh, 5,200 on DK. It's not bad, actually. Um, you need him to get to 30, which he has done in his last three games. He had 30 exactly yesterday, uh, 29 two nights before that, and the big 45-pointer right before the break on uh, Valentine's Day. I'm going to say Ish is a three. And after that, I don't really have much interest in anything else other than Stanley Johnson as a four on FanDuel only. So that covers all of the 730 games. Big stack of five. Um, let's head to New Orleans. Pelicans hosting the Suns. Uh, seven point favorites at home. They've got the number two implied total at 119.25. And obviously everyone knows uh, a matchup against the Suns is amazing. So gonna have a ton of Pelicans in this scenario. Oh man, AD, 12,500 on FanDuel, 11.7 on DK. You need 60 and change from AD. Um, if you remember, for those of you that were uh, in my live stream Friday night, we had some murmurs that AD was going to go for 100. Sure enough, 96.4 fantasy points look like a very clairvoyant call. I wish it was me that was making that call, but those are the sort of things you can see in my live stream. Amazing calls of people putting up 100 and nailing it. AD has two games above 90 <laughs> in his last two weeks. In his last five games, he's gone for 90 plus twice. It's nuts. Uh, he's a three. That price is insane. But, I mean, he is in as good of a spot as he could possibly be in. Um, he would make Dragon Bender look really, really bad. Uh, Len can't check him. Like, no, the, no one on the Suns can check him, basically. he's He has the ability to do whatever he wants tonight. Um... If he doesn't put up 60 fantasy points, uh, it would shock me unless they just beat them so bad and this game gets ridiculously out of hand. Um, AD should be able to fill this stat sheet with anything. It would be interesting to see him go for a 5x5 five five tonight. Because if, if there's ever a situation where he can pretty easily get 5 blocks and steals, it's just probably against Phoenix. Anyway. Drew Holiday, 8,500 on FanDuel, 8,100 on DK. Uh, went for 60 last night. Um, has been at 49 or higher in his last four. Um, amazing spot for him. Uh, he's just a straight three. Uh, Miritich, 7,800 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Um, I'm going to say that, man, that price on FanDuel is kind of rough. I'm going to say Meritich is a 3 on FanDuel <clears throat> and a 2 on DraftKings. Congrats to the people of DraftKings for having a guy with some value. No, 2. There we go. Uh, Eton Moore needs 22. 
definitely a place where he can get it. I'm going to say that he's just a four, though. Um, Darius Miller, 3,800 and 3,500. Um, that's not really for me. Rondo, 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Um, put up 43 last night. Needs 30. Uh, as a GPP play, it's certainly possible. I'm going to say that Rondo is a three. That's probably all I want there. Uh, we'll go to Phoenix. Uh, Suns, 112.25 implied total is sixth. Uh, that's actually pretty good for being a seven-point underdog. So as per usual, I'll probably have a nice chunk of Suns. Uh, nothing too crazy, though. Um, Pell's D isn't bad. So first up is Booker, 8,400 on FanDuel, 8,300 on DK. <clears throat> um, put up 47 two nights ago. Uh, that would be a right around his value number. I'm fine with it here tonight. He's just a, an easy three. Uh, TJ Warren, 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. You're looking 32 for him. Uh, had that in, the, in his past two games, you know, coming in with... Uh, a night of rest. I'm fine with Warren as a three. Alfred Payton, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. Uh, I don't really like that DK price at all, but 7,500 is not bad. Um, especially if you know he gets a decent chunk of Rondo. I'm going to say that he's a three on FanDuel, and I wouldn't touch him on DK. Um, then we've got Josh Jackson and Alex Lynn, uh, two guys with ridiculous prices on FanDuel. Jackson is 4,600 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. So you're looking for 23 from him. Um, minutes are trending down. Uh, he had been playing, you know, in the high 30s. Has only gotten 19 and 23 in the past uh, two games. So you need to be a little careful there. I'm going to say that he's a four on FanDuel and that's it. But if we have any inkling that he's going to be playing, I've got him in for 29 minutes here. Um, I'm expecting those minutes to bounce back. He's not the type of guy that should be getting a minutes cut in Phoenix moving through. So I'm going to uh, consider these last two games an anomaly. And if that's the case, his price is way too low. And uh, speaking of guys whose price is way too low, Alex Len is 5,200 on FanDuel and 5,600 on DK. Um, I smashed him the past two times because he is uh, underpriced, and he's still underpriced. Alex Len is a 2 for me on FanDuel. He's pretty close to being a 1, um, and he's a 3 for me on DK. Just, it's, he's underpriced, he's the starting center, and... <laughs> You know, for him to get like 12 and 8 is pretty easy. I, uh, you know, I mean, I'm oversimplifying it, but like it's just, he should be like 6 and change for his current role. I don't know why it's not going up on FanDuel, but I'm cool with it. I have no problem taking a bigger chunk out of Len. You know, in 24 minutes, he put up 37 fantasy points. In 29 minutes, he had 33. Both of those are going to be 6x plus on his current number, so I'm in. Uh, that's probably all I want from that game, though. Uh, we'll go to Oklahoma City. The Thunder have a 115.25 implied total, which is third. They're 10-point favorites at home against the Magic. Um, should be interesting to look at. Uh, Paul George, 8,700 on FanDuel, 9,000 on DK. Not the best number for him. Should be a pretty decent matchup. I'm going to say that he's a 3 on FanDuel, 4 on DK. Um, let's save this just in case. Screen should fuck up. Nope, didn't even do that. Cool. Uh, Steven Adams. 7,600 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. Uh, he's just a four for me. Doesn't feel like the Steven Adams spot, but has been playing really well. You know, 50-pointer, 42-pointer. Um, 
I like Adams, but can't go crazy here. Guy I'm most interested in would probably be Mello. Uh, 5,700 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. So you're looking for like 28 out of Mello. Uh, been in the 20s as three most recent games, but did have 37 um, in his first game back after missing two games. Uh, the Magic should be a good spot for him to get some shots up. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, Mello is a 2 on FanDuel, and he's a 3 on DK. That's a really good spot. That, that price is too low. If you flip-flop those prices and he was 6100 on FanDuel, it would make a lot more sense. Um, and then we get to Russ. Uh, 12000 on FanDuel, 11.8 on DK. Uh, Russ still probably a little salty over Zaza diving onto his legs. Um, you know, great matchup. It's, Magic don't exactly have point guards that are going to check him. Um, I'm going to say that he's a three. I do like him as a stud. And uh, as value comes open, I'll probably have more and more of Russ. I don't, <clears throat> I don't need anything else from... Well, Jeremy Grant, I guess, is a four GPP type guy. Go to the Magic now. Uh, expectation is that Jonathan Isaac will get a little bit of run. They've recalled him from the G League, so he should be ready. Um, I'm actually going to try to catch a couple minutes of this game, probably the towards the end of the first quarter, beginning of the second quarter. I'd like to see how Isaac looks. Um, I liked him coming out, and uh, I want to see how he plays and if they give him any run alongside Gordon. Um you know, that could be a future backcourt or future front court, depending on what they do with uh, Aaron Gordon's restricted free agency this year. But um, I want to see how they play together. I don't think that they've played together all that much, if at all. I know this isn't like DFS talk, but, you know, it's not as if we're not all basketball fans. Jonathan Isaac was a lottery pick last year, so for me, that's a little bit of interest, but... Do we have minutes with Gordon and Isaac on the floor? They've played 108 possessions together. Minus 4.7, you know, is really not that horrible for a rookie. Um, and that's an interesting thing to see defensively. You know, that's a really good uh, defensive rate for them. I'm surprised that the two most used lineups, though, were with Gordon at the three, which is, you know, not very good. Um, I'd like to see more of that. That's all. That's all I got. <laughs> uh, Magic, 105.25 implied total, 15th. Um, not a great spot here. Obviously, Oklahoma City, pretty good on D. Uh, we, so we've got 48, 6,400 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. Okay. You know, you're looking 30 and change out of 48. I mean, as a GPP guy, you know, you can go from 19 to 41. Um, could be a, you know, uh, could be a GPP guy that's probably low owned. You know, hope for the best, hope for a hot hand. Um I'm going to say that he's a 4 on FanDuel and a 3 on DK. I like that price on DK. Uh, Aaron Gordon, 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. Um, I don't have any interest in him whatsoever. Uh, Jonathan Simmons, 4,700 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. Hmm, huh, needs like 24. I'll say that he is a 4. And then the only other thing that I could possibly look at would be Vooch. Um, 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. Uh, he's just a four. Not a lot to like in Orlando tonight. We'll go to Dallas. Uh, Mavs, 104 implied total is 19th. Uh, second worst on the slate. Uh, they are two and a half point underdogs at home against the Pacers. Not too much to like here. Um, keep an eye on potentially Nerlens Noel seeing some minutes. Uh, I've seen that out there today. 
I don't expect it. I haven't seen anything that sends me on that line, but he should be back soon. Um, I'm not going to go line by line here because I don't like most of this. Uh, Yogi Ferrell on DraftKings is a four, or on FanDuel is a four. Um, and I think that Dennis Smith is just a four. Same for Berea. I don't have a lot to say here because I don't really like them in this particular matchup. Um, they've been spreading their minutes a little bit differently, and I don't think that the prices are where we want to. Like Everybody is in this mid-fives range, and that just makes me feel like I, it's a crapshoot. You, like you can talk me into Wesley Matthews having a good matchup here and getting some threes up, um, but with all of the stuff that's out there tonight, uh, I think that just like a, a you know one or two percent ownership on some of these guys is all I'm going to be looking for, barring any news. I'd like to go to Indiana Pacers with the 106.5 implied total, two and a half point or two and a half point favorites on the road, uh, mid tier. Uh, implied total so nothing crazy Oladipo is at a flat 10 which is just so incredibly pricey he needs 50 um you know he can get there we it's just he's just criminally overpriced um he's a flat four for me I won't have much of him at all unless we get some weird news and even then I don't even know what would open it up for me probably Miles Turner being out or something. Uh, not that I've heard that that's going to happen. I just mean that would be like one of the only ways I would expect it. Uh, Corey Joseph, 5,200 and 5,100. You know, you're looking for 25. Um, had two monsters in his most recent, uh, 35 and 42. Before that, just not doing anything. Um, I can't ever get a good feel on Corey Joseph. I think he's a much better basketball player than he is a fantasy basketball player. I'll call him a four. I don't have any interest in Thad or Bojan. And uh, Miles Turner at 6,500 on FanDuel is a little interesting to me. Um, I'll say that he's a four. I wouldn't touch him on DK. And I probably wouldn't want much of anything from the Pacers on DraftKings. Now, the most interesting game on the slate, in my opinion, uh, Utah Jazz hosting the Houston Rockets. Jazz 105 implied total is 17th, and uh, they're two point underdogs at home. Uh, just a really fun dichotomy of teams. Um, I'm going to try to catch a little bit of this game if I'm not asleep at that point. Um, so Donovan Mitchell is 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,900 on DK. You'd be looking for 40. Um, you know, he does that. He's done it twice in his past four games. Uh, just had 43 a couple nights ago. I like it. Um, I'm just going to say that he's a three. I'd be a little weary of him on DK, but I think this is a good spot. Joe Ingles, 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. No interest. I know that he went for 38, and he's been, you know, he's been hot. But uh, 6,700 is... There's no upside left in that number, in my opinion. Um, I'd like Ingles is probably okay in cash, but I don't even really like it there. Not on a 10-game slate. Gobert, 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. So you need 40. Um, I don't mind the idea of Gobert here. I'll say that he's a 3. Rubio, 6,800 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Working him back in. Uh, played 29 minutes in his most recent. Um, hopefully this extra night of rest is going to help. You know, the pace should be a little higher for him. Uh, I'm going to say that Rubio is a 4 for me on FanDuel and a 3 for me on DK. Uh Favors I would entertain on FanDuel, 5,800. Um, that's not too shabby, but still just a straight four. And I don't really want any Crowder or Royce O'Neal. Now the Rockets. 107 implied total is 12th. 
Uh, we've got James Harden at 11,100, um, both sites. So you're looking 55 plus. He had 59 last night. I don't really love the idea of Harden on a back-to-back -back with Utah being the second part of that back-to-back. -back. Um, altitude will get you. So I'm going to say that Harden is just a four. He's probably the guy that I would limit the most from the studs perspective. It's just a scary matchup. Uh, Chris Paul is 8,400 and 8,800. Um, he would need 42. I, I don't mind him in cash. I don't think that he's a very sexy play in a GPP. And I don't really like his prices on DraftKings either. Uh, Ariza, 4,900 and 4,700. Um, I don't mind that at all, actually. But he's still just a four. You know, the back to back has me a little concerned. And then Capella, 7,700 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. Um, tough matchup with Gobert. This doesn't seem like the best Capella spot. I'm going to go four. It's hard to really get uh, too excited about uh, these guys on the Rockets having to go to Utah. So let's take a look at the final game. Kings hosting the Wolves. I like that we're saving what's probably the best for last. Uh, I haven't looked at any prices, though, so it might not matter. Uh, Kings 105 implied total is 17th. They are 5.5 point underdogs at home to the T-Wolves. Uh, Jimmy Butler out with the meniscus injury now, so kind of makes the Kings a little bit more interesting. Um, Wolves' defense is uh, atrocious with Butler out, so something to keep in mind. Um, Bogdan, 5,400 on both sites, so you're looking for 27. Uh, big game two nights ago, went for 38, had a 36er before that. Um, Wolves do give up a bunch of extra threes, so I think that this is an okay spot for Bogdan. I'm going to say that he's a three. Um, I think it could be unique to have a little bit more of him in a GPP. Willie Cauley-Stein, 6,900 on FanDuel, uh, 6,500 on DK. I have a sneaky suspicion. Oh, God, I hope I'm not wrong. Well, it's not going to matter now. I'm already uh, pot committed to this. This might be an audio podcast. I'm just speaking out loud. For some reason, I saw a graphic that I didn't expect to see. If this was on, uh, this could have been on just my logo for the past hour. And I won't know until five minutes from now when I stop this. But if it was, I hope you enjoy the audio. And if it's not, everything I just said is stupid. Um, yeah. Willie Cauley Stein, 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Needs 35. Had a big one in his last game. Um, yeah, I'm just going to say that he's a four. Don't want to type it. Uh, De'Aaron Fox needs 28. Um, this isn't really a spot for me. I'm going to say he's a 4. Where I'm not even remotely Where? How does that even get there? <laughs> I'm not typing that anywhere near where I need to. Uh, no interest in Justin Jackson. Buddy Heald, the only other piece that I would really have a ton of interest in. in. Um, 4,800 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK, but that 4,800 price is nice. Um, you know, put up 38 a couple nights ago, 29 as well. Both of those would have been value. Uh, I think Heald is in a good spot. I'm going to say that he's a 3 on FanDuel, 4 on DK. And then uh, I guess I got to look at Scal, 5,400 fan duel, 4,500 DK. I am a bit of a Scal fan, but he's probably just a four. And 
Finally, we go to Minnesota. Wolves, 110.5 implied total is ninth. Five and a half point favorites on the road. Uh, Kings bad on D. This is an exceptional matchup. No Jimmy Butler. So let's uh, let's dig it in. Wiggins, 6,900 on FanDuel, which is kind of a bummer. 6,600 on DK. I would have liked to have another game where you can go crazy on Wiggins. Um, he's a three because of the matchup and the way that this game should go, but uh, the price is getting to the point where it's not as interesting. Uh, Jeff Teague is going to be a four for me. I don't really love the price point. Uh, Bielitsa. This is probably one of the last games where we would want to load up on him from a value perspective. FanDuel nerfed him a little bit. 5,600 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. Um, I'll want a bit of him, uh, but he needs to get to 28. Um, he can get there, but nah, he's still just a 3. Taj would be a 4 here. And then uh, Towns, 10,000 on FanDuel, 9,900 on DK. I really, really don't like this price. Um, he's been really quiet lately, 39 in his last two games, 39 without Butler. Um, but I do like this spot. So I'm going to say that Towns is a 3. For, ooh, man, I don't know. I don't like the value. You know, I'm gonna say Towns is a four. I can't, I can't go crazy for it. Um, Jamal Crawford is a four for me on Fanduel, but I'd say that he's a three on DK. Uh, Thirty-eight hundred is an interesting price. Should still get a chunk of minutes. So that's everything. Um, let's go ahead and I should have saved that first, but whatever. Let's go ahead and save it and pop this into the optimizer and see what we get, at least for right now. So, we'll upload. Collapse that. So, let's set that to 10. We'll see what we get in 100 lineups. Wow, that's a lot of Josh Jackson. So I definitely want a lot of Chris Dunn, Collins, and Mello. So if I went Mello, Dunn, Collins. Um, I wouldn't want either Randall or Len. Uh, I would lean Len. So we would be looking at something like this in terms of my favorite types of <clears throat> types of lineups. You know, something like Curry, Dunn, Holiday, Booker, Bielitsa, Jackson, Collins, Anthony, Len isn't bad, but I just I'd be nervous about having three sons on a night like this. So I could see going to uh, something more in this range. Russ, Dunn, Booker, Buddy Heald, uh, Beasley, uh, B. Jelly, Collins, Anthony, Lynn. But there's going to be a lot of fun lineups out there tonight, I think. And any news will open that up a lot. Let's go check out DK and then uh, we'll get out of here. I hope that you guys were seeing that spreadsheet the entire time. That's going to be really annoying if you weren't. Let's see, it's supposed to rain on my way to work, which is fucking lovely. And just to reiterate from the beginning, um, we'll be going live at 6.30 tonight since we have the 7.30 start. So let's uh, gear up for that. Alrighty. Change this to 10% random. And go. Okay, what's going on here? Stop. 
Didn't change the exposure, if that makes sense. Change all. It's like Gary Payton, Harry Giles, these guys aren't even playing. Makes more sense now. Let's try this. There we go. Wow, that's shockingly slow. Why? Fuck if I know. A lot of Rubio, which is interesting. That is the price is good though. So Miritich and Collins are my two guys that I want to focus on here. So let's grab Miritich and Collins first. That takes me down to 21 lineups. Um, and then from there, I guess we want to look at Bielitsa. I have some interest in marketing at that price. I don't like the idea of Van Vliet, though. DK might be a little tricky tonight. I'd start with Miritich and Collins, but I don't know what direction I'll go after that. I don't know. DK will be tricky. But I will be back uh, live before lock. 7, 7.30 lock, so 6.30 start. Uh, if anybody has any questions, you know, feel free to hit me up on Twitter or Reddit or in the comments here. Uh, like and subscribe if you uh, want to help me out. Uh, thanks to all my patrons. Um, you guys are awesome, awesome people. Thanks to everybody, just in general, and the support. But uh, big thanks to all my patrons. Um, and uh, that's it for me. I will see you guys tonight. Adios.